Well again, so in my last video I showed this shield that I had added permanently to the meter and I went back and I retransient tested it and after I did that the resistance in the 10 mega ohm when I was doing the functional test was reading quite a bit low. One meg. And 10 megs. So what I've done is gone back and cleaned the insides of the meter and you can see the meter is back to normal as far as reading the 10 meg. Uh, we can also see on the 1 meg, you know, it's no problem at all. Some of the resistors I've got are fairly accurate. So 1k ohm, for example, this is a 0.1%. You can see the meter is reading this very accurately. Uh, the 10k I have is a 1%. And, you know, the capacitance still reads just fine. Again, I've got these leads right now all twisted together, but you can see we're fairly close without even rolling out the meter. If I just clear this out real quick, and then we'll reattach. You know, the meter is basically dead on. So one of the problems you can have with a lot of meters is they have a fuse inside. It's very rare for me personally that I would ever use the internal current shunts on a meter. You could see if I have the meter in the resistance mode on a lot of meters, I can attach between the voltage input and the fuse input, and you can see it basically reads a dead short. Some meters like this UT181A have a lead detection circuit. So if we attach our connector between the two inputs, we could see it shows a lead error. We'd also get the same message with our Brahman BM869S. So if we go to ohms and we attach our jumper between the two, you can see it has this lead error. But on some meters we can kind of fudge this out. One way to do that would be to use a probe like this that won't actually trip the input. And I just have to touch along the side walls and there's our resistance. And I can do the same thing with this uh, Unity. Or I can probably just slightly plug it in right there. So you can see I just haven't fully engaged the jack. Another way to check it is just to use a second meter. So if I just check the resistance between the common and the amps jack, and you can see we're basically reading the resistance of the shunt. I can do the same thing with the low current input. You can see the problem with this is it actually has to be selected. So 50 ohms in that range, and I expect this is like an ohm, yeah. So let's just see if I go between the common, and there's our shunt, and let's try it with the milliamp microamp. Yep, and again you can see it has to be switched to the milliamp or the microamp range. And in this case, this 4 to 20 input should also engage that. So this Gossin has a couple of features. One, if I'm in the resistance mode, it's got this shutter. So I can actually jumper between here and here to test the fuse. I can, however, check it with another meter. So again, if I place this into the amps range, and I just go between the common and the milliamp, we can see right there, 211 ohms and 51 ohms. Let's try it with the meter off. So this meter actually has a separate cover just for the fuse. It also only uses a single fuse. So instead where most of the meters I have use a large fuse for the high current and then a smaller one for the low current. This one only has the single fuse and it's shared for the high and the low current ranges. So if the fuse were removed, I won't actually take it out, we'll just kind of leave it in there. And I were to turn on the meter. You can see it displays fuse, meaning that the fuse is blown. And it'll do the same thing in the DC current range. Let's go ahead and reinstall the fuse so I'm now making contact and you can see we're reading the current 
Now if the fuse were to blow open, see they can't detect that. See until I change the range, they don't actually go back and read it. Likewise, if the fuse was blown and I change it out so now it's re-engaged, you can see it doesn't clear out the air. Again, we don't have the schematics for this, but I suspect you have your common input here and we have our amp jack here and there's this shunt and I would suspect that they have a small circuit out here that's looking at the voltage drop across this and of course if there's no current flowing through it they wouldn't have a way to detect a voltage drop so I suspect they have some kind of a current feed that actually forces current through the fuse to detect that when it's open and they can't engage this circuit when they're reading the normal current because that would actually introduce an error across this so one way they could probably have done this is with inside the firmware once they've done their little pulse test at the beginning when they first go into the mode they could have turned off this circuit and then just started looking at the voltage drop across this because what would happen normally is if you were trying to read the current and this fuse is blown you know the voltage drop is going to increase across this anyway so assuming that this is a high impedance amplifier and it's always attached across the fuse I don't know why they couldn't have monitored that real time all the time to me that would have been a lot better way to implement the feature but again I don't really know how this meter is designed they don't make the schematics for this public I'm just kind of guessing that this is how it works that we have some kind of a current source similar to how it's going to measure the resistance for example so I think that's going to be it for this short little video. At least you get to see where the meter can still read resistance properly. Till the next meter. Later.